Hey, what is up guys, and welcome back to another Epic 7 Hero Preview for you guys today. And today we're going to be talking about the new Moonlight 4-star unit, and that is going to be the light version of Akades, who was teased in the past few days, Infinite Horizon Akades. And she is a light Soul Weaver, so she is keeping that Soul Weaver role, and you're going to see that she's going to be very good at cleansing. So her animations look pretty sick, if you want to see more about her design, Check this out on the official Epic 7 YouTube channel, but let's get into the good stuff and talk about her skills and her stats and see how good she'll actually be. So the first thing you're going to notice with her stats is that she is pretty slow for a Soul Weaver. She's at 100 speed and she will have effect resist built into her awakenings with an imprint concentration of effect resist, which will kind of signal that she will be a cleanser, right? And as you guys saw from the teaser, it looks like she will be turning debuffs into buffs. So that kind of makes sense because she will want effect resist to cleanse. Also, her defense is very, very high for Soul Weaver, which is very nice. It'll make her innately tanky, and her health is not bad as well. And also, looking at her effect resist, even though she's going to be a cleanser, guys, it's going to be pretty low. Usually, you're going to see effect resist users, especially like Soul Weavers, have like 30% just from Awakenings, and then from Imprint Concentration, another like 27% if they're 5-star, and for 4-stars, I guess 23.8. Um, but... Akadius is only going to get 12%, which is extremely, extremely low, and it might hurt her a lot. Now, looking at her skills very quickly, her S3 is an AoE full dispel of all allies, and will grant a random buff for two turns for each disp um, dispel debuff. So if you dispel three debuffs from your allies, you'll grant them three buffs per ally, right? If you dispel, you know, one debuff from one ally and two debuffs from two allies, the two allies that got dispelled two debuffs will get two buffs, and the one ally that got dispelled one debuff will get one buff, and etc. This will also heal, which is very nice, and will scale with Akadi's max HP, which will make this heal pretty bulky if you can build her on, you know, a decent amount or a sizable chunk of health. Now, when the scale is available according to cooldown count, so when this is off cooldown, when it's available to use, at the end of an enemy's turn, you will get CR pushed by 15%, and this will work on, like, extra turns as well, like Ran's S2 and, like, uh, Ada's S2 if she soul burns, right? So this will make it so she can cut enemy units pretty easily, right? If you're going against like a Conqueror Lilius or like an Ada, like I mentioned, or a Ran or like a Pera, you can actually cut because the enemy will be taking two turns most likely if they use their extra effect. And this will just make her very good into cleave automatically because cleave teams used to you like to use a lot of turns, right? Um, if you use like in a mid and you have a Politus on your side with ML Kades, you can cut pretty easily as well. And when you cut, you can actually cleanse all the debuffs that are put on your team by the enemy units and turn them into random buffs. And you see that the random buffs here are going to be very, very good. You can get a greater attack buff, which is insane. You can get critical hit chance, which is probably one of the worst ones here. You can get critical hit damage, which is, which is also very good. Increased speed, always very nice. Defense buff, very good against cleave. Increased critical hit resistance, also very good against cleave. Immunity, also very good against cleave because usually what will happen is after the enemy first unit goes, uh, they'll probably use all their uh, strips and the spells on you. And then if you cut with Infinite Horizon to Kades and she S3s and you get immunity buff, um, you're not going to be able to get defense broken and stuff like that. And you can also get a revive buff after, which is going to be, obviously, as you guys know, super, super strong, right? Against like cleave units and just in general. Barriers, which will give you a lot of mitigation. And also a stealth, which will not be terrible in a lot of situations because the stealth does give you AoE damage mitigation when it's up. But keep in mind, I saw that if you're using like an S10A and you all get stealth, your S10A can get sniped out, so you have to be careful about that. But yeah, overall, this S3 looks pretty powerful and the animation is pretty nice as well. Um, I think this is going to be a very, very good unit into heavy debuff teams and into cleave. As you guys can see, there's so many debuffs on the left side here. And bam, you just get a ton of buffs and pretty much this game is won, right? You're just overloading the enemy side with uh, buffs on your side. Now we have our S2. It's a two-turn cooldown which is very, very short, and it's going to be a 2 debuff dispel from an ally, and will also give them a barrier, and also CR push by 40%, and this barrier will scale with your max HP. So nothing too crazy, uh, but you're going to notice that the barrier is not bad, it's going to be pretty sizable, and the CR push is very nice because you can actually use this to push up allies to, you know, take their turn quicker. I don't think this S2 is anything too crazy, but her S3 is probably going to be her main selling point in her kit. Next we have our S1 guys, it is a chance to stun on a single target attack. So we'll burn this for 10 souls to increase the effect chance to 100%. So yeah, nothing too crazy, but this unit looks pretty fun to use. She's going to be available from the 24th in the Mystic Summon rotation. We'll talk about that rotation when it comes closer and if it's worth pulling for, especially the ML 5 stars. But I think this unit will be very fun to use. I don't think she'll be like super broken, um, but I definitely think that 
she will be uh, pretty good into cleave, like I said, and heavy debuff teams, like I mentioned. The only thing is, her effect resist is super, super low. So if we actually look at her effect resist, so because she's a four-star unit, you will eventually be able to SSS her um, and get her to about 45.8% effect resist without gear. Um, that is pretty low for a um, you know unit that is solely dedicated to cleansing. It looks like her main job is to cleanse. If we actually look at Angelic Montrancy here, you're gonna see that she gets 18% from effect resist from concentration. Uh, she'll also get 12% from her awakening, and she'll also get 45% from her skill tree. If we look into the skill tree here, you can see 40% and then 5%, which means that she's just going to be so much easier to gear to cleanse. So in terms of gearing, for PvP, like Angelic Montmorency will be a lot easier to gear as a cleanser, right? I think this new Moonlight 4 star will be pretty good if you can, can gear her with very high effect resist. I think she'll need about like 250% to 300%, even more sometimes because in RT and World Arena, you will see dedicated debuffers like AOL, ML Flan, and stuff like that be at like 200% plus effectiveness, and you will need 300% ER to actually prevent getting debuffed because you need to make sure you don't get stunned or debuffed so you can actually use your S3 and you know just win the game because you get all these buffs. If your infinite horizon Akades gets crowd controlled, you will pretty much lose the game because her only selling point in her kit honestly is going to be how her S3 is so powerful and so game changing. I think you definitely need to have very good effect resist gear to actually make her work. For that reason, I think your Bastion of Hope will most likely have to go on her if you want to use her a lot. This gives you 70% effect resist at the start, which is very, very good, because you need to get as high of effect resist as possible. If you don't want to use Bastion of Hope, you can use Ocean Breeze Luluka's artifact if you're not using her. You probably want it maxed out for that 40%. Having it at just plus 15 will give you 30%, which is not the worst, um, but you definitely want to squeeze out that extra percent if you can. There's a ton of artifacts that give you effect resist, even Guardian Ice Crystals, even though um, it doesn't give you that much. You can also use Unfading Memories because uh, this will give you a heal on your S2 as well and give you 25% effect resist. So a lot of options. You definitely are going to want to use something that gives you effect resist in your kit as a Soul Weaver because, yeah, she needs a ton of effect resist to actually work. So yeah, definitely excited for this rotation. We have Silverblade Araminta, we have Lionheart Sermia, Desert Jewel Bazaar, and Last Rider Crowl. All of these units are pretty decent. And then we also have the ML Akades, who looks to be pretty fun to use and very powerful. I think she'll be pretty strong in the meta if you can build her on high effect resist. I don't think she'll be as broken as like an Angel of Light, but she definitely seems like she will have her own niche as a cleansing unit against Cleave and against very heavy control debuff centric teams. So, you know, if you're fighting against like Death Dealer Ray and like Solitaria and Pirate Flan and you're struggling, she might be a good answer to you if you can build her on high enough effect resist. That pretty much sums up this video though guys, I think she's going to be pretty strong in her niche against Cleave and against heavy control debuff teams, but I don't think she'll be super broken like Angel of Light or some of the really strong ML4 stars, but she seems very fun to use and I definitely will try to pull for her. If you guys found this video helpful, make sure you guys leave a like and also consider subscribing to see more content like this, and I'll see you guys next time.